Multimedia J Radio Style. Well, it looks like I screwed up my last segment by activating it before the clock struck midnight. <laughs> <laughs> so the date is actually ahead of when I actually published it. But yeah, there's been a lot of stuff going on. So, uh, well, at least this follow-up segment will be correct. So let's talk about the 800-pound gorilla of a question of why I'm not in IT. After confusing the living daylights out of the 9 to Vibes maintenance manager and the friendly neighborhood HR lady by going for an entry-level maintenance tech job, even though I have such a huge background in computers and stuff like that. What was going on there? Well, I think it's time I talked about the hard truth about having an IT background these days. So where do we even begin with this? Well, first of all, my roots are in electronics, not in computers. And the electronics background that I got first has been more handy across a wider variety of issues related to technology than the formal computer background that I picked up in college. And actually, my background in electronics, circuit boards, soldering, etching boards, working with multimeters, AC, DC circuits, etc., things like that actually came in handy even when I was learning about computers formally as a computer information systems person at the college I went to. So my roots are in electronics, and electronics has been far more useful over the years. I mean, yeah, it's fun to build computers and stuff like that, but if you look at what mobile has done to the scene these days with technology, I don't think computers are going to be anything more than an enthusiast product in the next couple of years. They will still deliver the most powerful gaming experience if you're not using the cloud and whatnot. If you want an actual local device with a lot of punch to it, you can't beat a gaming PC. And at the same time, in the high end in the world of business with engineering and stuff that requires heavy number crunching, if it's not being done on servers or data centers through network connections, which can scale up a lot better than your average PC, yes, maybe there's a future for the diesel trucks of computers known as workstations. But for the most part, we're seeing computing become more of just an appliance, something that serves the purpose of a computer that isn't actually a formal desktop or laptop. And also something to think about, the post-millennials coming into the workforce that are eventually going to start transforming it as the rest of us get old and retire, grew up with smartphones. And it's probably going to become more and more the case that you may have somebody that really knows what they're doing if it's a smartphone but isn't all that big with computers because smartphones have not had the kind of stigma associated with them that computers have had. So because of this, as well as the ramifications for business when it comes to training costs and other kinds of things related to running a large corporation, I seriously think that smartphones are going to become issued more so than laptops in the very near future. If a company would hire a professional and issue them a laptop and a smartphone, I absolutely would not be surprised if eventually the smartphone was the only thing that was issued, along with accessories to allow the smartphone to function as a laptop. Especially if somebody has something like, if they grew up, for example, listening to music on a little Bluetooth headset with their phone playing all, the, all their music or going to Spotify over their data plan or something like that, it wouldn't exactly be all that weird for somebody to walk around with a headset for taking calls, you know, like the thing that goes in your ear with cell phones nowadays, and just take calls on your device while using it as a laptop, especially when more horsepower gets packed into these Qualcomm Snapdragons and stuff like that. You know, we make fun of mobile now, but so did supporters of mainframes back in the days when the desktop PC was considered a toy. <laughs> <laughs> Times change, and either you're going to change with them or you're going to get left behind. So I, for one, am decide have made the decision to, if someone still needs help with computers somewhere, I will be very glad to be of assistance. And if a school system or something still needs help with their desktops and laptops, whatever they have left, because they're not issued to somebody. It's more like you got to have a classroom with a bunch of stuff so the, the teacher can teach the software. That's probably the last bastion of computers that we're going to see in education and likewise in business, too. 
if you have computers that don't belong to an individual, like, say, computers out on a factory floor or something like that, you might still see something resembling a computer. But I expect IT to become more and more like electronics rather than the desktop, laptop, ATX stuff that we've seen for since the 1990s. It's just the way that things are going, especially with the development of hardware to the point where outside of enthusiast applications that require a lot of horsepower, those magic two words of good enough are in play here. And you're going to focus on other things like the contribution to overhead from how much power the so-called computer thingies draw, whatever's serving the purpose of what desktop and laptops might have served up to this point. That's when you're going to start looking at things like warranties and service plans and how much power they're drawing, what's their contribution to overhead, what's their uptime, stuff that sounds like the stuff you would have previously heard in a server farm, but what have computers become in the enterprise for any of them that are still out there. They're generic appliance-like devices. They're usually all the same type of things, so you have less to support and the costs associated with extra contracts, licenses, etc. They're little boxes, and they have the same stuff in them, and they have the same software on them, and you keep images and other stuff, whatever you keep for you know, bringing them back in the case of having to bring a computer back from wiping it out or reformatting it or something like that, but... We are far, 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 far removed from the heydays of the 90s with sneaker net and no local area networks and desktop PCs basically being a little beefier when used in a business environment versus at home. Now, combine that together with the move towards automation and robotics and industrial robots and whatnot that are showing up on the scene these days. Combine that with what's going on in that world And it makes perfect sense that folks like myself who actually want to still be useful to folks years down the road will want to get into more moving parts and being more of a general Mr. Fix-It kind of guy who can solve problems as opposed to this kind of technician or that kind of technician or somebody where some artificial barriers are the reason why you can't work on a piece of equipment. It's not just me either. If you look at some of these computer channels, you'll see these folks whip out the power tools for some kind of mod project, or maybe they're working on something like something involving water cooling or some kind of fancy setup or something that requires them to do a little bit of fabrication work, maybe even bring out a CNC machine or a 3D printer. I mean, this is all stuff. This is all stuff that folks who used to be just plain old fashioned computer nerds are getting into. And of course, robotics. Enough said. (laughs) When the robots take our jobs, somebody's going to have to fix the robots. Unless we create Skynet or something like that. But if there's opportunity there, why not get into it? Instead of sitting around moping about the robots took our jobs. Yeah, very forward thinking here. But it's the same thing as when at the last 9 to 5 that I had. The company announced that they were getting rid of Microsoft Access at some point. So all of the query work that I was working on in Access, its days were numbered. Now, I've already known over the years those one-trick pony technician types who went to college and learned this and flag nab it. They weren't going to learn anything else. You're in the wrong business if you have that attitude, by the way. So I was in the perfect position to be angry and resentful when this announcement was made that Access was going to be retired. After all, I'd gone to school for this stuff. I'd taken classes on this stuff. I was still paying off student loans from this stuff. How dare they? But I wasn't like that at all. I dove headfirst into the new stuff. Once I found out about Power Query in Office 365, which we were being upgraded to as well, I noticed that... Power Query could do just about everything that we previously needed access for, except be far more standardized, far easier to work with, and far less proprietary, to the point where if somebody learns Power Query, they can make and modify any of this stuff without needing to have a situation like we'd unfortunately had numerous times, where somebody makes this super complicated access database, doesn't stick to the norms and conventions of labeling everything and stuff like that, and then they leave the company and nobody knows what on earth to do with the darn thing. But what matters here is the soft skill of learning new things, which is something that I have always been very, very good at. Because if I get into something, I want to get good at it. No matter what it is, no matter what I want to try my hand at, I don't want to be somebody that could just barely do something. I hate feeling stupid at work. 
If I ever do feel stupid at work, you can bet that I am hitting the books to not be so stupid ASAP because that's just not the right thing to do. But all looking to the future aside, let's get to the more human side of what the issue is with the whole thing with why I would want to move towards doing more Mr. Fix-It type stuff with more moving parts and using more power tools and things along those lines. IT has seen a lot of changes over the last 15 years, but there's a couple of things that have been consistent. Besides being a big tent to where you can't just say, I work in IT, you have to go into detail on what specifically you're doing, what language you're coding with, what kind of software you're engineering, things like that, what you actually work with. You can't just say, oh, I'm IT. Besides that, I have unfortunately very consistently seen IT people disrespected on a regular basis in corporate America. You want to talk about which of the businessy kind of professions is not considered a real member of the team? Try IT. It's one of the reasons why I'm not surprised at all the identity theft that goes on these days. Because when push comes to shove, IT people are treated like disposable support staff and laid off or outsourced. So you have Joey contractor in his van or whatever coming around doing your tech support. Somebody without as much compelling interest as people actually inside the organization and stuff like that. And we wonder why we have issues with identity theft and stuff like that. When IT is so devalued among so many companies out there. Perhaps one of the most constant issues that I see with the way human beings interact with each other in the workplace, no matter where I go, is the devaluing of other people's work. People consider jobs to be not valuable, even though they would notice if that person weren't there. This isn't just limited to so-called low-wage, low-skilled jobs either. It goes a bit further up the ladder than that. For example, the 9-to-5ers at this place I'm at now, they know me as a big computer guy because years ago, I actually helped support the computers and electronics in-house, the stuff that we used to run the warehouse, the computers, the electronics, the uh, the RFs, the pick-to-light equipment, the pick-to-voice equipment, and position eliminated. And, of course, uh, several years later, several years later, the guy doing hardware support, uh, doing IT-type stuff, desktop, laptop, electronics, sending things out for service, position eliminated. And it is this is far from a local problem at this place. I have seen on professional social media various people share their stories about how essentially their so-called career was dodging waves of layoffs the entire time they were involved with these folks. And I should go join the IT team that is left. We laid off the last local guy. So next guy up the chain is somebody who I think is still around, is somebody who is driving all around New England to site after site after site, depending on what's going on, burning through cars, no doubt, probably having a lot of the wonderful IT salary getting eaten up by high transportation costs and things like that. I mean, what exactly would I be moving to? And in the grand scheme of things, because talent is a market, it's not competitive. Driving all around New England, if there was a way for me to even do that stuff in the first place for a living, driving all over the place when I can just learn to fix, modify, and maintain different things and be able to use some of the things I went to school for, make a decent amount of money, and stay local, you can't compete with that. I mean, I always know that there's more to something than its sticker price. Things like total cost of ownership and things along those lines. And so-called dream jobs and dream careers are no exception. I knew a few people that I went to school with who landed the dream jobs upon graduation. And they wound up living in bad neighborhoods because much of that salary got eaten up by a much, 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 much higher cost of living. They had to live in a bad neighborhood with their dream job and not show off what they did for a living too much simply because of a much higher cost of living or it was transportation costs i know somebody that was commuting to boston every single day working a lovely corporate job at a place where he could actually have a decent career and whatnot and but he basically had to lose a sizable chunk of his day just to going to and from work every single day you're we're talking hours behind the wheel both ways so those fairy tale stories that sadly are still out there about 
Oh, you go to college, get a degree, and live happily ever after are far from the truth. Matter of fact, I'm actually wondering about going in the other direction. If we've just if we've spent entire generations telling people go to college and fight with all of those college grads with the same narcissistic ambitions that their parents drilled them with when they were growing up about how special they were and how they should have a nice, cushy, easy office job in order to not be miserable for the rest of their life. Well, if that's what everybody's going to be going for, I think I should just go in the other direction. Find some of those devalued, crappy jobs that nobody wants and be of use to others while having to maybe wash my hands with orange grit instead of regular soap at the end of a long work day. Because somebody has to do this stuff. And we're telling people that they're amazing and they're awesome and they're special. They should go to college and get a degree and make all kinds of money. And all they're gonna all of these people ever say when they advertise that stuff, of course, is what the salary is. Never mind things like cost of living, transportation expenses, might have to go back to school for licensing costs, things like that. Who follows the money on that stuff anyways? All it matters is that little junior got his college degree. <laughs> so yeah. I have my reasons, and they are plenty for why a IT just isn't as interesting as it might have been when folks were telling me all these lovely stories about, ah, get into electronics and computers. You make $50,000 a year in 90s money. <sighs> so, yeah, I have my reasons. Essentially, telling me to try and become an IT guy with these folks is a nice, friendly way of telling me to leave the company because I've just seen enough layoffs and I've seen enough people who talk about how I avoided this layoff and I avoided that layoff. Huh? Some career, huh? Bunch of jobs went to India and you managed to dodge this outsource, but not that outsource. Da, 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 da. I mean, seriously, there's better things that I can be doing, more useful things closer to home that local folks would appreciate a lot more than joining that rat race. If the right opportunity came, cool, I'd spring for it, but I don't see it. And I'm certainly not going to wind up like those out-of-work IT guys I read about during the Great Recession who sat home moping about how they were out of work for five years. And then they were like, well, it's age discrimination. That's what it is. No, you waited for a job that had been outsourced to come back from overseas for five years and would not apply yourself any other way. Because darn it, you were this and nothing else. Sorry, that's just not the way it works. Just ask any underemployed college grad who is still in this position despite the recession being so far in the rearview mirror. Again, generational narcissism put a lot of bad ideas in young people's heads, and that's why we're in the mess that we're in nowadays, as well as the messes that are coming. If less people have my pragmatic mentality and we end up with labor shortages and all these jobs that people are like, oh, that job sucks. I'm not doing it. I'm going to wait for this job that uses what I went to school for. So I have my reasons. Now I'm just waiting for somebody somewhere to actually respect my reasons for a change, because that is sadly the sort of thing that I almost never see. Sorry. Life is more complicated than your average fairy tale. If you refuse to acknowledge that, then you refuse to acknowledge reality. Just ask any recessioneer who did everything right, according to what people said, I did everything people told me to do, and then everything fell apart anyways when everything collapsed in the late noughts. Try telling that to somebody who's been through that sort of stuff. I'll spoil it for you now. You will not get very far. I hope this can be useful to somebody out there. Thanks for listening, everybody. This is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by.